discussions going on and dialogue about how to improve the workplace, be it in the United States or in Europe or in Asia. And, you know, there's a lot of discussions as well within that realm about gender and inclusivity. And, you know, we really see workplace issues coming up higher and higher on the agenda, especially as more people are evolving in hybrid working modes or working from home. But, you know, in, speak, in regards to gender inclusivity, when Davos started, this was a boys club, Robin. It was the European management forum at the time, and it was hard to see anyone here that wasn't wearing a suit just because the gender imbalance was so significant. That, of course, has changed significantly over the past few years, but in many firms, including some that are represented here, that's still a serious issue. And we see governments around the world trying to combat that, doing what they can in the case of Germany. Uh, companies that are publicly listed over a certain size are now required to have more female inclusivity on their corporate boards. But there's questions of whether doing that through the law, having a mandate, is the right solution. I'd love to see it come organically, but when you look at the data, we're going backwards. We're going backwards on pay gap. We're going backwards to advancement of women on boards. We're going backwards. Well, we're making a little progress there. We're making, and you know, it's because do we want to be a quota? Absolutely not. I'm not a quota. I'm the best at the table. And so the whole concept of giving up a seat, no. We're adding seats at the table with voices that matter. If you truly want diversity and inclusion, you need to have diversity at the table. And we make the table better.